Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192 on digital imaging with Photoshop for the spring semester 2022. Um, <clears throat> today, I'll be working on lesson nine. I tried to work on lesson nine on Monday, but um, because of technical difficulties, um, it wasn't working. This is past few weeks have been um, real struggle trying to get all these technical challenges worked out. Um, I'm working with a different computer today. I have a brand new um, router. Um, I had um, Spectrum out to check the internet. Um, I was in contact with uh, who else? Um, Zoom. Um, I think Adobe is okay, but I think I've had issues with Adobe and I think there may be issues with Zoom, I'm not sure. So we'll see how today goes. Um, just a quick reminder that um, next week is um, spring break. So we will not be having any webinars that will give you time to work on your movie poster and hopefully finish it up or have something for me to look at. Okie doke. So without any further ado, um, <clears throat> let's look at the, the, the finished result. This is our basic movie poster. And I talked about this a little bit the other day, but it bears repeating that um, it's, a, it's, it's kind of the, pretty much the kind of movie poster that I'm asking all of you to make. The only difference being is that they don't have credits at the bottom, and I'm asking you, all of you, to do that, to add credits, um, which are a fundamental part of most, if not all, movie posters that you'll see in front of the marquee uh, of uh, movie theaters. But, you know, they've given us quite a few parts of, the, of, of tidbits or images to um, build our, um, our illustration. They've given us the background image. They've given us the type. And the, pretty much the only thing that we're doing is we're putting together the um, using advanced compositing techniques. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put together the, um, the Frankenstein monster. And then there's a couple of other things that they want us to do that are probably not as important. So I don't know if they'll get to them today. But one is um, we've added some effects to a um, headstone that they give us. And then we um, bring in another image and we enlarge it. And they talk about that and then apply a, a filter to it. And at the same time, make sure that um, <clears throat> it, it's encased sort of in a um, a layer mask. Okay, so that's the finished one. Okie doke, so let's start. <clears throat> now, I think really the main point of this lesson, or the main feature in this lesson, isn't so much the compositing that we've been doing today, but it's working with um, Adobe Bridge now, I went back and um, I opened up the monster makeup, okay, in, in the lesson. So let me find that again. Um, I probably shouldn't have gone back like that. And then it makes it difficult for me to find. Um, yeah, monster makeup is on the desktop. So let's look on the desktop and it should be under M. Monster makeup. So there is the, the folder that I downloaded. And if I open up the folder, you'll see that there are all these bits and pieces, these images that we have to work with to create our final monster. So they're separate files, but what we want to be able to do is put the, all of them into, into a single file. Well, Bridge has a tool that allows us to do that. So I can select one hold down the shift key and select the last one. And they are all selected. Now I can go to tools and I can select down at the bottom here or near the bottom where it says Photoshop. What I want to do is I want to um, load 
files into Photoshop layers. So what it's going to do is it's going to take all of those files and load it into one file, and each one will have its own layer. So that's what we're going to do. I hope we'll see. Oh, it's opening a different version of Photoshop, but that's OK. Uh, just I don't want any of that. There we go. It's opening it in Adobe Photoshop 22. So I hope we don't have any issues today. I'm going to go ahead and move my picture over. I'll put it over to the left here. And you can see in layers, we have all the different images here. We need, simply need to reorganize the layers. We're going to put this fellow here with his hands outstretched um, near the bottom. So I can click and drag it near the bottom, or I can click and drag the others near the top. OK, so he's down near the bottom. And I'm going to turn pretty much all of the layers off until I'm ready to use them. So let's continue to move these others up. And we'll have to gradually put them in the right order. In fact, this one probably goes to the very top. But I'm going to go ahead and turn some of these off. So we just have the guy that we're going to use for our monster. And I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool and move it down. And with smart guides, I have them centered. And that works kind of nice. If I want to put them up here, it's OK, too. It really doesn't matter. OK. And now I'm ready to start building face. So the, the first one that I want to use is the mask. Let's turn that on. Much too big. Not aligned or anything else. So we have to um, resize it and go ahead and make it match the image or as close as we can, the image beneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and move it over like so. Then I'm going to hit Command T. If I hold down Shift, or that would be Control T on the PC. And if I hold down the Shift and the Alt or the um, Option key, I can shrink it down from the center and move it in place and try to get it, you know, ballpark image of where it's supposed to be. And then zoom in a little bit. Okay. And it's pretty darn close, not quite but close. Shrink it down a little bit more. And what you want to do is you want to match the eyes and the nose. They're the key features. And when you get it pretty close, now notice that I can stretch this up a tad, like so. Let's undo that. Um, let me see something here. I want to, is it allowing me to? No, it's, it's got the proportions locked. So what I need to do is undo that a couple of times. Let's go back again. Let's zoom out. I'm just going to hold down the shift key this time and shrink it down. Uh, there we go. So try to get it in the ballpark here. I'll zoom back in, put it into position. And now what I want to do is I've got the eyes that pretty, pretty closely match. Um, but what I need to do is to make sure that the mouth, I'm shrinking it down a little bit and getting it to fit really close. But the mouth doesn't match. So I should be able to move it upwards like so. Pull it down a little bit, and then let's pull it out a little bit. So I'm trying to get it as close as possible. And now I have pretty much the mouth and the eyes matching the photograph, the mask matching it pretty darn close. OK, and when I'm satisfied with that, just hit the return key or click the little checkbox at the top. We can always resize it. It's not a big deal. But the thing that we want to do next is we want to get the eyes to fit a little bit better. 
So what we need to do is we're going to use the liquify tool. So again, with this layer selected, actually I wanna make sure, yeah, that uh, that's selected and I'm gonna make sure that um, the background is visible as well, because that's important. I'm gonna go to filter. And then what I want to do is I wanna select liquify. It brings up another window. And what I need to do is make sure that, um, I wanna say show image, where's the background? I wanna show background right there. So it gives me something to work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, <clears throat> even a little bit more, okay? And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller by hitting the left bracket key. And now what I'm gonna do, what this allows me to do is to scrunch it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and click and drag. And you can see that it's actually, if you look carefully, it's taking the mask and it's creating a little bit tighter fit around his eyes. And that's pretty much what I want. So it allows us to slightly massage some of these shapes to get them to fit the way we want them to. And when we're satisfied with that, I think this is good for right now. I'll click OK. Okay, and it's a little bit tighter fit around there. Now, I can always go back with this, this layer and hit Command T, and I can stretch it again, and I can, you know, Let's go ahead and pull it out just a little bit. Make sure that it really, really is fitting the mouth and the eyes. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're gonna just start building the next parts. We can work now with the nose. It's not a bad one to work with. So we'll use move tool and move it into position. And we're going to do the same thing, command or control T. We're going to shrink it down. And it's this is one of the, the rare instances where it's not that critical that you keep the proportions. I like doing that to start with. But once it's in position, um, I want to be able to stretch it and distort it so that it actually fits the, um, the image underneath. So we're just taking them one piece at a time from the bottom up until we get an overall look that works for us. And that seems to be working, hit the return key. Let's go ahead and we have, um, I'm gonna leave the staples to later. Let's go to the, um, the forehead, that would be a good one to use. Move it into position. <clears throat> Again, hit Command T, Control T, shrink it down. Move it into position. So, a little bit too small now, make it a little bit bigger. So we're just taking it one at a time. If I need to stretch it out a little bit, I can. Um, I'm gonna look at the properties here. And when I say transform, I don't want, I wanna be able to be flexible. Right now it's scaling it uniformly. And I don't wanna do that. I want to be able to play with it and I have to turn that off up here. So now I can stretch it like so. If you want it, it's a relatively new feature um, that allows you to, you know, stretch and not worry about it being a uniform change and see how I can manipulate the width and the height separately. Get it to match as close as possible. And again, that's looking pretty good. 
Look at okay. And now let's go ahead and work on the ears or the neck. And that doesn't matter. Let's try the neck. Move it into place. And let's go ahead and hit Command Control T. Let's shrink it down. So this will go pretty quickly. Move it into position. A little bit bigger so that fits the width of his neck. And again, I can come back here and I can stretch that out a little bit and move, stretch this over a little bit until it fits. And it's all looking pretty good. Okay. Hit return and that fixes that. And now we have. Um, the already got the nose. What else do we need? The bolts, we have the hair. Let's go ahead and move that into position. And T. Oh, no, no, no. Make sure I have the right layer. Command T. Shrink it down. Put it in place. So this, you know, this is something that. Now, I don't use or do that frequently, but it is a legitimate way to work. Um, trying to nudge these in place here. That works okay. Just make sure that the images are in, are in the right order so that they're layered one on top of the other. Um, I could put the bolts up. I'll wait on that, though. I have one more. I need the earpiece. So that comes over here. And again, command control T. Shrink it down till it fits. Shrink it down a little bit more. And now what I want to do is I want the same thing on the other side. So what I need to do is I need to take that layer and make a copy of it. As soon as I have a copy of it, then I can go over to edit transform, not free transform, but transform. And down near the bottom, I can say flip horizontal. Now it's facing the other way and I can put that in place there. So now I have one for each side. And I can use my arrow keys to kind of nudge it in place. Okay, so we're just about there. We have one more to go. We have the bolts. <clears throat> we're gonna move those into place. Like so, and once again, Command T, transform, and shrink them down until they fit. Size is really not that critical. They can be big, they can be small. Hit the return key and they're in place. So we have our monster put together. We have a couple more things that we want to do though. One is that if you'll notice that his skin, and notice I didn't know the monster was wearing a wedding, wedding ring and a watch, but um, um, we need to colorize his skin, his, his skin. So what I wanna do, as I'm going to select his layer and create a new layer on top of <clears throat> Okie doke. Because I'm going to paint on that layer, not on his layer, so that I can work non-destructively. The next thing that I want to do is I want to select him. Now, since he's already been isolated from the background, all we have to do is hit the command key 
and click on the little icon a representation of him. And you can see the little marching ants that surround him now. So that protects him, but I want to work on the next layer. I want to work on layer one. Now, if I come over to our, my paint tool, let's take a paintbrush. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a nice big paintbrush. Whoops. Uh, let's go ahead and change the size of it. And I can go ahead and hit the right bracket key and make a pretty big brush. And I need to select the eyedropper tool. Um, let's come over here because what I need to do is I need to find a color in here that, that fits for us. So let's go back with a brush. And now I can start the paint. But if I do that, notice that it's just like painting a wall, painting a fence or something. It's covering up the underside or the, the under um, the layer beneath it. What we want to do is to colorize his skin, but leave all the wrinkles and the crevices and the detail in it. So to do that, we can go a couple of different ways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from a normal mode down here all the way down near the bottom and select color. And now when I paint, <clears throat> notice that the marching ants protect the area. <clears throat> Let's make the brush a little bit smaller in a minute. <clears throat> and I can, at the same time, by using the color mode, what it's doing is it's allowing us to um, keep the details the lights and the darks beneath in the layer below, but at the same time, um, colorize the skin and um, being able to work non-destructively. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm just trying to get all this painted in here. Just changing the brush size a little bit. And I don't have his shirt protected in any way, so I do need to be careful about that. But it pro generally won't colorize that, just colorizing the rest. Now, if I wanted to colorize part of his ears, there or something, if any of those are showing, I can do that maybe a little bit over here. OK, so now that I'm done with that, I can deselect Command D. But when I'm done with all of this and I bring it over to my other image, I don't want to have to um, bring it over in multiple layers. I want to bring it over in one finished layer, but I want to keep this layer, you know, this file intact. So what I'm going to do is select the very top layer, scroll down, select, hold down the shift key and select the bottom layer. So I have all the layers selected. And now what I want to do is I want to combine them all into and flatten them, but leave all the original layers intact. So to do that, you hold down the shift, option, command, and hit E. And now when you look at the top, you can see that it is a combined layer. And all the other layers are intact. So now I can just select the top layer. I can hit command. <clears throat> um, select all, command A for select all. I can copy. And now I'm going to go back to the other version of this, and hopefully this will work. I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to paste. And there he is. I can move him down in position. And we're good to go. OK. Not too shabby. Pretty darn close match. The next step we want to do is we want to, um, we're going to bring in this couple here. 
So what I need to do is I need to open them. I'm gonna to go to file open. I'm gonna go back to my folder that has them in there and here are the faces. I'm gonna open this in Photoshop. There we go. And this is something that over the years has um, changed considerably in Photoshop and that it enables you to <coughs> um, enlarge an image and keep most of it intact um, without too many artifacts. Um, in the past, you weren't able to resample a piece like this and work with it at all. It just doesn't work. Um, and that was, you know, but I still um, would be very cautious about enlarging images too much. But this is how you do it. So with this image selected, I'm going to go ahead and go to image. And I'm going to go to image size. And now what I want to do is three by four inches. And I'm going to resample this and make it a little bit bigger. To be perfectly honest, um, I forget the size that they want. Let me go back and that might be, let me go back to this image. Let me cancel this and see what resolution we're working at. So this one, this is where you need to be careful with your movie poster. That if I go to move um, image, um, image size here, we can see that we're working at, it's 11 by 17, the same size movie poster that you guys are working on. But the resolution is not 72 pixels per inch, it's 150. So my image over here needs to match that. So if I select the faces, and I want to keep it four by five, then what I need to do is I need to go to image, image size, and I'm going to make sure that this says resample, and I'm going to put in here 150. But what I want to do, rather than automatic, I'm going to say preserve details and enlargement. And notice that there's a number of other options available for us as well. Now, what I also want to do is reduce the noise. So if we look in here and I zoom in a bit, you see that it looks a bit blurry in here and you begin to see artifacts. Well, what we can do, and because this is kind of a, a, a tertiary image, it's not or one of our principal images, we can go ahead and reduce the noise on that enlargement. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. About 80% generally works pretty well. So now you can see that I've, I'm still working with a 4 by 5 image, but it's at a much higher resolution. Before, we, we had an image at 72 pixels per inch, and now we're working with one at 150. So now what I want to do is I want to bring them over to our, um, our file. So using the move tool, I can just click and drag it over like so, and then pull it down. And there they are. Um, I guess I did want it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to delete this. Um, we wanted it considerably bigger. So let's go back here. Faces, and I'm going to go back to image size. I'm going to, I forget what they use. I'm going to go six by eight. This is really pushing the limits of it. So now that that's changed, let's go ahead and drag it back over and see if that works a little bit better for us. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. In fact, we can make it a little bit smaller. So I can hit Command T and I can go ahead and shrink it down just a little bit. And again, I have that locked thing. I don't like doing that. I know it's a nice feature, where you can lock the height and the width. But I'm so used to holding down the shift key or the shift and option key to do that. Um, it just comes a little, you know, force a habit over all these years. 
Um, now what I can do, I could have either brought it over um, as a gray image, or I can do this now. I can go ahead and take this image and we can apply an adjustment layer to it, black and white. But notice, and if you recall, adjustment layers affect every layer beneath it. So I need to hold down the option or alt key and command key or just the option key and click there. And now it only affects that one layer. And then what I wanna do with this layer is I need to create a mask on this. So I'm gonna go ahead with my marching ants, the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna hold down the option key or alt key so that I make one from the center here. About like so. And then what I wanna do is I wanna feather it about 50 pixels. And with it feathered 50 pixels, I'm gonna go ahead now and with this layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into, and it didn't soften it. So let's go ahead and see if we can't feather it this way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and with the mask selected. There we go, that works pretty nicely. I'm really cranking it up this way instead. And this gives us the option of changing the, um, for our mask um, or for, yeah, the layer mask of changing, you know, how much we want that to, um, uh, to be feathered. Um, we can always go back and if we don't want it feathered at all, we can do that. Um, it's a nice, again, a way of working that's non-destructive. In the past, it would have been totally destructive to do that. Um, we would have had to do it several times until we got the look we were going for. So about 50 pixels. And then what we can do is we can you know, adjust the opacity for that layer, make sure that the layer is selected, adjust the opacity, and we've got that part done. Okie doke. Just a couple more things that we have to do. We have um, one more image that we need to bring in and um, I'm not gonna follow the book exactly with this, but it's a way of, it's this one right here. Um, and if we go back to this image and we select that layer, it's that one right there. Let me go ahead and use the move tool. They've have applied a number of effects to this to get the look that, that, that they want. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in here. And then we'll call it a day. Um, title is turned on, we've got them working, we've got the, the monster created. Let me go ahead and find that headstone. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to file open. That's another little piece that they have provided for us. This is the one here, the T1 PSD. So that's it. And that looks kind of ho-hum, but we want to blend it with the rest of these. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move tool <clears throat> and I'm going to move it over here into the backdrop and drag it down and click OK. And there it is. OK. Make sure that it's on its own layer. Nope, I didn't do it right. Let's go back. I'm gonna go ahead and select the very top title layer and drag that in again, because this became part of the mask um, for the couple and it was transparent and I don't like that, I don't want that. So I just click and drag it again, bring it in. Come on. There we go. So now we can kind of move it in position. 
and we can apply some effects to it. I can do that here, I suppose. I don't have to do it down here. I'll just do it up here and then we'll move it down. So one of the things that they want us to do, and we've used this before, <clears throat> is that we've applied the filter uh, of the, the clouds to it. So one of the things that we can do, and there's some other things that we can try to get the look that they're going for, and that's where they get that kind of smoky feel. So we can go ahead and it's under render. And, but before I do that, what I like doing, because some of the, most of these filters are permanent. So they are destructive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna first duplicate the image, turn off the bottom one. And I'm gonna take this image, the copy that I made, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to um, layer. And what I want to do is I want to turn it into a smart object. And now what I can do by using this, this is a smart object. Um, all of the, the filters that I apply to this will be editable. So now what I can do is I can go back and if, but if you don't do that, it won't work. So I'm going to go back to um, render and I'm gonna apply clouds. <clears throat> and let's see, let's don't do that. Let's go ahead and um, make a selection. And now let's just apply clouds to that selection. Um, let's go back to render. How about clouds? Okay. And let's take this. I don't like that. I'm gonna do it over here instead in the original file. I think I'm gonna do it here. So let's do that here. Um, let's go ahead and, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I can do that over here. We can go back here. And instead of normal, let's go ahead and redo that. What I can do, let's go ahead and try overlay. No, it's not for soft light. No, it's not working for me. So I'm going to undo that. Um, what I could do, though, let's do it this way, is... Um, to apply that, I'm going to go ahead and add another layer on top of that and use a clipping mask that way. So now if I go ahead and I apply the, the filter, um, render, clouds, okay, I didn't want to do that. Let's deselect. Now let's go ahead and apply it. Let's go to filter, render. Uh, clouds. Okay, and now clipping mask. We're going to use this one down here. Now it's contained within there. And now we can go ahead and we can adjust the opacity or we can change from normal. You can see that there's a number of options that we have here and you can just kind of scroll through them. If it darken doesn't do anything, multiply isn't a bad choice. We can go linear. We can also try lighten. We can also try screen. That's not a bad one. Overlay is probably the best one. There we go. So we have that. Now, in addition to that, we can go back and we can select our, <clears throat> our layer here and we can go and add another adjustment layer. And in this particular case, what we can do to add color to it we can go to um, uh, and, and either use color balance or we can create um, um, a hue saturation layer. So now what I can do with all of these is I can begin to adjust the hue in here. Let's see what we can do here. Got to make sure I have the right layer selected. There we go. Uh, 
Okay, so it's just affecting that layer down there. There we go. Um, 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 um. Let me see. No, it's not having the effect that I hoped. So let's move this above. Let's move this below. Now let's try this. No, that's not working either. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. Let's try it slightly different. Um, it may be that the, um, let's turn this off and turn this on. No, let's do this. I'm gonna make a copy of this layer and let's move this down to here. Let's turn this one off. And now we've got this one that's in here. Okay, so it's only affecting that layer. And because I had a smart object, I'm not sure that um, the adjustment layer was working. So let's try again with this. Now let's go back in here. Now it is changing the colors, but not the ones that I want. Okay, let's go back. Um, I'm going to move this down here and see if it's and see if it will affect the colors there. No, I'm not having any luck at the moment making that work. Um, I could go back to the original one and play with it, but I'm trying to do it at the very end here. So. Um, For the most part, it looks pretty good. No, I don't want to change that. Let's make sure that I have the right layer selected. And I think what I need to do is I need to select all these layers and link them together so that I can put them in place, move them in place. Let's make sure that they're all, oh, come on, come on. There we go. Make sure that that is linked to. Now let's try it. There we go. So now they're all in place. I can reduce the size of it a little bit and I can apply a color overlay to it but I have the basic thing going. It's just the tint that I'm not getting to work the way it should. And as soon as I log off with all of you, everything will, um, I'll remember what I need to do. In the meantime though, um, that's pretty much it for today for um, advanced compositing. Um, do you guys have any questions for me today before we finish? No? Let me change the size of that a little bit. No questions? Okay, then that's it for today. Um, I'll go ahead and make this video available um, to all of you within about an hour or so. Okie doke. Um, remember next week is um, spring break, so we will not be having webinars then. Um, I appreciate you guys for attending. No glitches today. Um, this computer seems to be working pretty well. And I'm happy about that. 
So um, I need to figure out with my other computer what the problem is, why it's bogging down so much. Okay, so if that's it, I'm gonna say goodbye. No questions? Okay. I'll pause the recording. Okay, well, thank you for hanging in there. Question? Somebody has a question? Elizabeth? Anybody? I can allow both of you guys to talk if you want. Elizabeth or Paula? Oh, you can't talk, Paula. You're using an older version. No, there's no questions. Okay. Then, um, yeah, look on the look in um, Canvas, and you'll see when it's due. Now, I know it says next week, but we don't meet next week. So you actually have another week to work on it. Okay. Or if you finish it sooner rather than later, then start to work on, you know, do less than 10, which covers um, Photoshop is a digital painting tool. And we'll have, you know, more time than this, uh, this assignment to work on the next one, which is covers digital painting. Okay. At the time that I set up the due dates, I didn't know when um, um, spring break was. So yeah, it doesn't have to be turned in next week. But if you have it done, super. Okay. I'll see you guys.